All right, guys, in this review, we're going to be taking a look at the new SpeedyB Master 5 HD frame. This is a five inch freestyle frame that is meant for the O3 air unit, and it comes with some awesome, very unique features. All right, so let's open this up and see what comes in the box. We got a QR code to the manual. Looks like we have an assembling guide right here. Ooh, this is packaged pretty nice. So it looks like we have the top plate right here. Bottom plates. Oh wow, they organize this pretty nice. Look at this. Pieces of foam separating each arm. This is very nicely organized. Looks like we have some rubber dampening. This is kind of like a silicone. This is gonna be for the 30 by 30 or 20 by 20 stacks. And we have two of these. One is a little more stiff than the other one. This one is definitely softer. This one is a little more stiff. Looks like we have some wiring. We have the standoffs. Camera plates. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. This is a little heat sink that they include that actually helps dissipate heat from the O3 air unit. So this frame is meant for the O3 air unit. You got a bunch of screws. We have an XT60 connector that mounts directly to the frame. I don't have many frames that have that. Um, and the one that I do have, it's pretty nice. I do like having that. So like we got a bunch of TPU pieces. You can also get these in yellow. They sent me a bag of these. It's, it looks like it's the exact same prints. I'm not sure if these are included if you buy this, but they sent me these, so I got them also in yellow. What else we got? Looks like battery foam, or a battery pad, I should say. A couple battery straps that actually feel pretty solid. All right, we got antenna tubes. Always good to have those. Let me make sure I don't miss anything. So these are the front brackets that will uh, keep the O3 air unit camera safe. We have another piece. I'm not really sure what this goes to. Oh, this goes on the bottom of the O3 unit. So this somehow uh, attaches to this. We'll figure that out later. I think the yellow looks a little cooler than the gray. So I'm gonna use these, gonna get all these pieces organized and then we'll get to assembling the frame. All the arms are the exact same, so if you have to replace one, you know, there's no differentiating the front from the back. All right, let's get into building this. All right, so originally I was gonna show you guys how to assemble this frame, but since SpeedyB includes pretty detailed instructions and even labels the individual bags of screws, as you can see on this, every single compartment of screws is labeled. So this is the screws for the stack. This is the screw nut for a stack. Everything's labeled. It makes assembling this very easy. The SpeedyB Master 5 comes in two versions. There's a standard Master 5 and then there's the Master 5 HD. This is the HD version. The main difference between the two is that on the HD version, um, these arms are set back a little bit to prevent the props from being in the view of the O3 camera. The standard Master 5 has a 222 millimeter wheelbase while the HD version has a 225 millimeter wheelbase. Another difference between the standard version and this version is up front here, you have a hard mounted XT60 connector. This is something that I have only on one of my other drones and I love it. It really does help with cable management, but this is something that you'll only get on the HD version. You won't get this on the standard Master 5. And the other main difference is that the VTX mounting back here on the HD version, you have a 30 by 30 and 20 by 20, whereas on the standard version, you're just gonna have the 20 by 20. So let's take a closer look at the frame before I throw some motors, props, and an air unit and a flight controller in this drone. 
All right, so up front, we obviously have our camera mount, and this is spaced 19 millimeters apart, which is perfect for the size of the O3 camera. We have CNC brackets up front that will really protect the camera. They feel very solid. And this entire front piece, like I mentioned, sits far enough forward where you won't see the props in the camera view. Behind that, we have our mounted X-T60 lead. And I think that this is an awesome feature that more drones really should have. Like I already said, it really does help with cable management. Um, this sits almost directly above the 20 by 20 and 30 by 30 mounting holes. So since it's in front of the stack, it'll probably be easiest to rotate the ESC and then remap the motors um, in Betaflight so that the power lead is a little bit closer to this XT60 hole. The 20x20 20 20 and 30x30 30 30 mounting holes are very unique on this drone because it is completely dampened and separate from the frame. So if you look underneath here, it's kind of its own standalone rubber piece and you have the 20x20 20 20 and 30x30. 30 30. I already mentioned this, but they give you two different versions. This one's a little more stiff. I used this one, um, but this is pretty much what it looks like. And it just kind of sits right in there and it keeps everything dampened and separate from the frame. So this should help a lot with vibration. Moving on back, we have the 20 by 20 and 30 by 30 VTX mounting holes. Again, if you have the standard version, you're not gonna have the 30 by 30 mounting holes. You're just gonna have the 20 by 20. Both versions are gonna have the built-in heat sink and that's gonna help with heat dissipation with the O3 air unit. This is another pretty unique feature with this frame. I think that this is the first frame that has a built-in heat dissipation for a VTX. Basically, you have this heat sink right back here and this sits flush in the frame. This is what it looks like right here. And it just kind of like sits right in that groove. It has a little lip on it. But basically this is gonna sit right like that. And then you're gonna have the O3 air unit and they also include this right here and this will mount to the bottom of the O3 air unit. And then this has 20 by 20 and then these holes are gonna mount directly to the O3 air unit. So this is gonna also help with heat dissipation because this is gonna be sitting right up against that heat sink, right like that. And in the very back, we have a multi-piece TPU holder for the O3 antenna, a receiver antenna, and even a GPS bracket. On the top, we've got some battery grips on the sides, and then on the bottom, we have a rubberized kind of sticker that's gonna just help protect the carbon fiber. Something else worth mentioning uh, before I forget, if you do have to replace one of these arms and they are very thick, I feel like they'll last pretty good in a crash, but then again, you, I'm sure it's possible to break one. If you do break one, they're very easy to replace. You have three screws here and they are holding in these two arms. So if you had to replace this arm right here, you'd remove the middle screw and then you would remove this one and then this arm would come right out. If you need to remove this one, you do the middle one and then this screw right here. So very easy to replace. So overall, I really like the design of this frame. This thing has a lot of unique features. The dampened stack mounting, the hard mounted XT60, the heat sink for the VTX. There's a lot of really cool things that are built into this frame. So I'm gonna end this video with some flight footage from the drone all built up with an O3 air unit in it. I'm not gonna show you guys how to build a drone in this. If you're interested in learning how to build a drone, I'll leave a link to one of my build videos up here. Um, but as far as this build goes, I'm gonna cut now. I'll show you guys what it looks like, but then we're gonna go to some flight footage and you can see what footage from the O3 air unit on this frame looks like. All right, so here's the drone all built up. I love how this thing looks nice and compact. Everything's in there. You do have even more space up here and you do actually have a 20 by 20 mounting pattern. So you could mount additional electronics up front if you wanted. And one thing that I forgot to mention earlier is if you have the HD version of this frame, you're gonna need a 200 millimeter long coaxial cable for the air unit. Since the camera's pushed forward a little bit, you do need that longer coaxial cable to connect the air unit with the camera. All right, let's take this thing outside and see how it flies.